So a couple days ago, somebody asked me how I do the uh, the buttons that I've been creating on YouTube backgrounds and, and websites. So I wanted to go ahead and just do a real quick tutorial on that. Um, uh, first of all, though, buttons are a call to action, so you want to make sure that they have a, a good prominence on whatever design you're doing. Make sure they work with the background, but they also pull some focus and, and, and pull away from the background. Um, you want to make sure the font that's used in them is consistent with other fonts that you have on the, the, the page. Um, but it is, you know, in this case for a YouTube background, it's it's usually a subscribe button. So it, it, it needs to have a major uh, focus against your background for people to take action and click it and subscribe. So what we're going to do, I'm going to make this kind of a bigger button just for so you can see it easier on the tutorial. Um, in fact, let me just go ahead and make this super huge. Um, because I don't know what it's going to look like, you know, on a smaller screen. So I'll do, do that for now. Um, first step is to let's create the corners of this button and let's pick a for this one I'm gonna do kind of like a magenta or ruby color so I'm gonna pick a darker um, kind of uh, ruby color there take your uh, your circular or ellipse marquee tool and let's just drag out a corner hold shift so it creates a perfect circle and control delete to fill it with the background color Go ahead and use your keypad and bring it down a few um, pixels and control delete again. And there you have the two corners for the left side. So come over to your rectangular marquee tool and let's go ahead and fill that left side and get our shape going. And I don't ever really use vector masks for this stuff. I know it's easier. There's a whole shape tool <laughs> in Photoshop, but I'm so used to this. This is how I do it. Um, so you see we have our left side, I simply just copy that, edit, transform, flip horizontal, drag it over by holding shift so it stays on that, that x-axis, control E, and there you go. You have your gigantic, huge red button. All right, so let's give it a gradient overlay on the text effects, or the layer effects, and let's choose the colors we already have set up. So we want those reversed, we want the, the lighter color on top. Let's go ahead and create a blank layer and merge those together so we get rid of the layer effects. Um, go ahead and make a copy of that layer. Give that a stroke. The stroke will be a gradient. So let's give it kind of the uh, um, kind of like a chrome look. So for the bottom color, pick like a, uh, a mid-level gray. Then let's give it another blast of uh, you know white here in between. Here we'll give it another dark gray, and here we'll do something a little bit lighter. So we have a, a very subtle gradient going. Hit OK there, and for tutorial's sake, let's bump the stroke size up. I'm going to do 13 pixels. The other thing you want to do here is blending options. Click that, and see this fill opacity? You want to bring that down to zero. That's going to let the gradient layer shine through below it. So now what we're going to do is another blank layer. Select both of those. Control E. And now you just have that the stroke. See how that works? So on that layer again, let's give it another stroke. This time it's going to be black and or, or something pretty dark. And you usually probably just want to use one pixel. Um, I'm going to keep using one pixel. But see how it just gives it just enough edge to come against the uh, to, to pop it off the back of that button also let's give this an inner glow um, the color let's pick kind of a chrome you know like a blue would be a nice ref reflection off of that um, set it to overlay and the size we just want one maybe two and it's just gonna gonna pop that edge a little bit more hit okay this bottom layer what you're going to do is you're going to select half of the the button like so come pretty much right in the center take your burn tool and for this I'm going to need a bigger brush so I'm picking 300 and just go real quick across and that'll bring that edge up a little bit more another um, spot to burn if especially if you have a bigger button is these two bottom corners a little bit just a hair and then if you know where your middle, uh, the middle of your button is going to be, then you can kind of do um, one overall 
if I can pick a good right dead center up top just to kind of brighten it a little bit so now um, let's go ahead and give that an outer glow to give it kind of a shadow but a, a, a you know a consistent shadow so we're gonna pick black and the mode is gonna be normal size you know just kinda bring it up we want it to be subtle we don't want it to be you know like another just huge black bar around it but kinda subtle like that and then let's also give this an inner glow and choose white and the mode should be overlay and just bump the size a little bit it's gonna kinda give it a little bit of in this case a pinkish hue rather than just you know a white like that so this stroke here I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's go ahead and for the stroke we did you know on this top layer let's make that a gradient too so change fill to gradient and in this case we want the top to be dark maybe almost a black and the bottom to be kind of a, a mid gray and that'll kind of give it that'll break it up just a little bit so there you go you have the base to a button and uh, the next you know really the last thing is just to overlay your text we want you know you want buttons to be kinda simple we don't want them to be um, you know take away focus from a logo or, or other you know items that you want to bring focus to so you know in this case I'm just picking a, a you know say I use this font throughout the rest of the design um, big white lettering one thing you can do is make a simple copy of that that layer and when this is on a smaller um, you know size it makes more sense um, but that layer go ahead and make it a darker you know gray and just on your keypad just bring it down a couple pixels to to give it kind of a drop shadow effect and then drop the opacity down on it just a hair probably 50 and there you go you have a great big red button so you know this looks better when it's smaller when it's big like this it's kind of blocky but it makes sense when it's on a, a, a you know when it's when you're trying to work it into like a, a website or a banner space or, or something to, to help um, you know get people to click on it so I hope this helps um, there's other ways to do buttons by you can do buttons you know till you're blue in the face but this is just one real quick way that that you can do something fast looks good and works well so Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Later.